Former President Barack Obama chastises President Biden and the Biden administration for the way they've encouraged Israel to attack Palestine. There is more information coming out about the Biden crime family and so much more. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out. So thank you so much. Also, I put out a two minute update about how there is a judge, a Democrat judge, trying to remove Donald Trump from the presidential election ballot. I'll make sure to link that video at the end of this video. President Joe Biden has just broken all expectations and has entertained the possibility of a ceasefire agreement with Hamas if they release the remaining 220 hostages. Now, when asked about a hostage release deal during an event at the White House, President Biden stated, we should have those hostages released and when we can, talk. Now, just a few weeks ago, President Biden claimed Israel had the right and the duty to defeat Hamas, but now it seems President Biden is entertaining a deal that would keep the group in power and from going into extinction. Now, is Biden bluffing in an attempt to get hostages out of Palestine and then give Israel permission to attack? Or is he sitting back thinking, wait a minute, we overreacted and ended up with a million people uh, dead in the Middle East and a $9 trillion war? Or is there something else up his sleeves? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Now, former President Barack Obama also chimed in to offer his feedback on this controversial and highly emotional situation. While he sided with Israel in their efforts to dismantle Hamas, he warned against Israel's decision to cut off food and water to civilians uh, as it could further harden Palestinian attitudes for generations, erode global support for Israel, play into the hands of Israel's enemies, and undermine long-term efforts to achieve peace and stability in the region. While this warning sounds fair, Israel's president noted that Gaza only gets 7% of its water from Israel, which means that Obama is overestimating how much control Israel has over Palestine. Now, this, his words are getting a lot of pushback, especially on Twitter or X, where they're saying, why are you siding with Palestine? Why are you anti-Semitic? Why are you saying let's not destroy Hamas? I, I think Obama is trying to walk a fine line where he's saying, go after Hamas, but don't go after Palestine uh, as the collateral damage. But let me know your thoughts down below. He basically told the White House to pull their head out of their butt and to step up their game when it comes to negotiating for hostages and the way that they treat Palestine versus the way that they treat Israel. Now, as hostages continue to stack up in Gaza, Biden's reputation is being damaged by the minute. Thankfully, two older Israeli grandmothers were released for unknown reasons. One of the women, 85, uh, Yovachev Lishitz, took an interview in which she claimed she was beaten on October 7th, but was treated fairly gently thereafter. Furthermore, she put blame on the Israeli government for their lack of preparedness to stop the attack, which led to what she described as hell on earth. So far, less than 1% of the hostages have been released back to Israel. So this is horrible. I'm so glad that she and this other woman were released, but there's still hundreds and hundreds of hostages that need to be returned to Israel. Now, back in the United States of America, the Department of Defense is reportedly struggling to keep up with President Joe Biden's promises and commitments. They are saying, we do not have the resources, the money, or the weapons, or even the support to handle a two-front war. We simply cannot support Ukraine, and we cannot support Israel at the same time. So there may come a time 
when President Joe Biden has to decide which country gets help and attention from American taxpayer money. The, Pen the Pentagon admitted weapons that were sent to Israel were redirected to Europe, which clearly illustrates a major supply chain issue. Now, National Security Advisor John Kirby claimed that, the, that Biden requested more supplemental funding from Congress because there was a concern that the supply for America's own defense was getting dangerously low. While it may sound like we're screwed, Kirby claimed that everything is under control because the United States has stayed on top of the surge in demand by also surging the amount of production that we're doing here at home. They're just not talking about it. Now, do you believe that that's true? Or is this just a talking point because they accidentally said the quiet part out loud, which is the US military is unprepared and doesn't have enough ammunition to defend herself? Now, the one thing that I am reading is that um, Ukraine is being asked to return missiles and ammunition back to Israel. So if you ask me, it sounds like they're kind of already setting up to support Israel more than they are to back Zelensky and the country of Ukraine. But let, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. With this information in mind, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has sided with President Biden. No surprise, right? Now, in calling for passing Israel's defense funding alongside Ukraine, McConnell argued that funding for Ukraine is good uh, because a significant amount of that will go towards replacing our own stockpile of modern weapons. So listen to what he just said. It's good to give money and weapons to Ukraine so that my donors can get new money and weapons here in the United States. That's what I heard at least. Let me know what you heard down below. Now, while we're on the topic of Mitch McConnell, he also gave an update on his health after freezing twice on camera. Uh, he stated, I'm in good shape. I'm completely recovered and back on the job. McConnell's doctor agreed, claiming there's no evidence of a stroke or a seizure or even Parkinson's disease. Uh, while I doubt McConnell is in good health, Hopefully, he's at least in good enough health that he can do his own voting and, and speak and articulate himself to the American public. Representative James Comer has just taken the time to realistically discuss the state of where Republicans are at in regards to a new Speaker of the House. They had a new one that they put forward today. Trump bashed all over him. Others bashed all over him. And basically... He got the nomination, but he's not going to get the votes. Now, a new poll is showing that actually Jim Jordan is the one that the American people want. But when was the last time that representatives in Washington, D.C. actually did what the American people want? Honestly, I, I, I can't even remember. And I cover this stuff every day. So I don't know what's going to happen. There is no Speaker of the House. We're going on over 20 days now. They need to put this in place to pass bills, keep money going. The government will be shutting down again, and we have potentially a three-front war. So we'll see what ends up happening. Now, a controversial Supreme Court decision has just granted the Biden administration a stay in the case of accusing them of censorship of free speech with social media companies. This means the Biden administration will temporarily be able to continue to censor critics until this goes through the Supreme Court. Now, isn't that convenient as we go into the 2024 election cycle that they're saying we're re-granting uh, your authority to oppose people who oppose you and block them with social media companies? Hopefully the Supreme Court will do the right thing and protect freedom of speech more than protect the Biden administration from keeping themselves in office. Soda giant Coca-Cola has decided to distance themselves from Black Lives Matter after siding with the Palestinian Hamas terrorist attack. Uh, the, the Black Lives Matter chapters in Chicago and a few others put up the paragliders coming in that then ultimately murdered almost 1,300 people. Uh, and they've taken down on their website that they're giving Black Lives Matter $500,000 in donations. So there's a lot going on. 
possibly a three front war, no speaker of the house, the US economy continues to struggle and the Biden administration continues to pretend that it's not struggling. I'll continue to keep you updated. Now, before you go, I wanna remind you that you are amazing. Please hit that like button and that subscribe button. I am in Dalhart, Texas, so thank you for your patience as I step away from my family to keep you in the loop on what's really going on. Now, make sure to check out this video from earlier today, very important information. Also check out this important interview. Thank you so much, and I will see you on the next video.